I was about eight or nine when this happened to me. At the time, using a computer was still a new thing for me. We're roughly talking about 12 years ago, where as a kid, you only used a computer to play games and simply searching for dumb stuff on the laptop seemed like a good idea. Now a little context, I never really told this to anyone because it's kind of a tricky conversation to come to and the deep web at the time was pretty much still unknown where I lived. I remember that a couple of times my uncle, who we lived with and who was in his 20s, used to borrow my grandma's laptop as his computer was still extremely basic at the time. Whenever he finished he would just return it to my grandma and she would never question anything that he downloaded to the computer at the time. Looking back now, they should have password protected the computer or shut me away from it because this shit was traumatising. I remember looking at the blackish icon on the desktop. I don't remember the name of it, but I was curious to, as to what it was. Now looking back, I'm not actually sure what it was. So if anyone has any idea, feel free to drop it in the comments. When I clicked it, it brought up Firefox type of browser. Everything looked the same, nothing was off at the time. At the time, we used to have a Hungarian forum as the front page, as we didn't know much about Google. So we would search stuff through that engine, and it would work fine. So naturally, nothing seemed off. However, when I tried to search up some animal videos, because I wanted to watch cute animals, I came across an English title which at the time was gibberish to me, apart from the word gorilla, which is pretty much the same thing in Hungarian. So I clicked on it, and oh boy, I wish I never did that. The browser took me to a website which was completely black, and had a red counter on it. It wasn't too long left, about three to four minutes or so, so I thought I would wait, as maybe it's a buffering time, which was extremely believable because the internet was at a shite back then. Even now when I think about it, my heart rate increases and I just feel sick to my stomach. The counter stopped at zero and the video begun. I saw this girl, to my best guess she must have been around 17 to 23, just casually laying on a mattress on the floor. Then she sat up. It was kind of hard to tell too much detail as the room was mostly dark. There was only just a slight red light that barely made anything visible. The pixels didn't make it easy to see anything either. I felt as if it was streamed or filmed at 360p. I felt like she was waiting for someone to come in the room. She was completely naked and it gave off the vibe that she was paid to do the deed. Or at least that's how it came off. Suddenly, a chair door was pulled up on the left side of the screen and I saw a gorilla walk out. At this time, my heart was beating so fast that I was surprised that I didn't pass out. All the alarms were going off, but me as a dumb eight-year-old, I wanted to continue watching the video. The gorilla first seemed shot that it became extremely aggressive and charged at the girl, clawing her eyes out and ripping her chest off. I saw the blood drip everywhere and the gorilla started eating the body, which by now was motionless. The shot wore off and that's when I said nope and closed down the laptop very quickly. I sat in the corner and cried for a good half an hour and I realised that I should probably close the tab so I don't get told off. With my shaky hands I opened the laptop and I was met with a lost connection to the server error page. I could never erase this shit out of my head and always dreamt about it at the time it gave me a big time trauma. But until this day, I'm scared to share the story with anyone because I don't want them to think I was a psycho and just made the story up because I want attention or something. Please, if you ever saw this and got scarred for life, please for the love of God tell me that I wasn't the only one who saw this.
It was a few weeks ago when I was watching some Mr. Nightmare videos whilst playing some PlayStation. And the video I was watching had just finished. I had autoplay on it and it led me to a scary dark web story. I was about to change the video, but I suddenly became interested in it. I was listening to the things you can see on the dark web and was thinking, no way. But boy, was I wrong. I heard somewhere along the lines of a story that they downloaded a Tor browser. I immediately stopped the video on my phone, turned off my PlayStation and went upstairs to my computer. I looked up Tor and I saw a browser you can download. When I read about it, I learned about Onion Sites. Onion Sites are sites that you can't access on any type of the regular browsers like Chrome or Explorer. Instead of ending with .com or .org like most sites, they end with .onion. They aren't meant for human eyes. My curiosity took over and I downloaded the browser a few minutes later. I opened it and it looked absolutely normal. Then I browsed for a few minutes looking at onion links, nothing really that interesting. I looked a bit further into it more and more each day, and then for a few weeks. I thought I found all the links possible and was about to call it quits. But then a few days ago, I was about to close the tab and I saw a link that was in red and it said, enter if you dare, next to it. I pressed the link thinking I was a tough guy and what I saw, I can't ever unsee. To briefly explain it, a grown man with a mask on was torturing a young girl and beating her, whipping her and cutting her. I heard her screams of agony that sent chills down my spine. I immediately tried to close the tab but it wouldn't close. I typed in the chat something along the lines of, let her the fuck go and get me the fuck out of here. That was the worst mistake I'd ever made. He took his knife, slit her throat which killed her and said you thought that was bad, you're going to go through way worse. Then he said I'll see you soon and said my full name and this scared me like hell because I didn't even put my name into the website. I'm not writing this because I turned off my computer and we haven't gone on it since. And last night around 2 in the morning I turned it on. I heard a deep voice saying to me, see you tomorrow. It was the same voice that said my full name and threatened me. It's been a few hours since this happened and I'm writing this because I don't know what to do. Please, if anyone knows what to do to help, do not ever go on the dark web ever. You will regret it. I got too comfortable on the dark web, and this is a story that changed my life. Browsing the dark web is simple. Download Tor Browser and do as you please, which is exactly what I did. I was with my friend at the time, and that's where you become reckless. We were up late that night, past midnight, and we were watching scary dark web experiences on YouTube. Little did we know, this led us to one of the most horrific experiences, and one that we would never forget. Damn, this shit's creepy, Daniel said. Well, you know what this means. We're going to have to try it for ourselves, I stated. What's a bad decision looking back? This was a bad decision indeed. I proceeded to download Tor, a five minute wait, and it was downloaded, and we were set to go. I instantly searched dark web red rooms, but nothing too bad came up. I continued to do this for the next few weeks. Nothing strange except gore and porn, which was nothing compared to the terrors we heard about on YouTube. And so I dug deeper and deeper into this hidden site of the internet. And each time I accessed it, I became even more confident. Now moving on to the night of the incident, I was at a sleepover with my friend Daniel. Remember him from the start? 
and so we searched dark web chat sites. And there we found it. Chat for free. Online deep web chatting site, it was called. And so I said, great, let's take a look at this then. Big mistake. Daniel was weary before we even clicked on it. And I don't blame him now for that. But looking back, I was so overconfident. And the reason for me being like that was because during my time on the darker side of the internet, I didn't see anything bad. Wait, are you sure this is safe, Mike? And I replied with, Yeah, totally. What's the worst that could happen? And I clicked. Bang. I was hit with several pop-up ads instantly. My computer started running slow. No, but my computer was pretty old, so I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Once I cleared out the stupid ads, I met a page saying, Welcome to chat for free. Click start when you are ready. The loading circle on the screen lasted for quite a while until we met our first user. You and Sam both like hockey, was written at the top. Our camera was on, but Sam's wasn't. All we could see was a black screen, so we skipped off him. But you need to remember his username, Sam the Man 666 and we'll get to that later. On our chat for free website, we met a couple of penises like usual and a lot of black screens. Our second time with Sam the Man 666 concluded an empty room. His camera was on, but no one was there. And then in the chat box, it said, Sam is typing. Hey, showed up in the chat box. What should, what should I say, Dan? I exclaimed. Dan seemed to be shaking quite a bit. He seemed in no mood to answer my question. Hi, I wrote, low-key hoping for no response. Sam is typing, appeared once again. Where do you live? Sam wrote. That shook both of us, so I just clicked off the website and cleared all search history immediately. So then we fell asleep. We both lingered awake for a while thinking about Sam and who he really was. But eventually we both fell asleep to leaving the computer facing us. Bad idea. 3.20am. I woke up. The computer is now on with chat for free open. But the website screen seemed darker and more unnerving. I immediately woke Daniel up. As I slowly get closer to the computer, I see that they're in the chat with Sam the Man 666. But his face cam is, well, strange. His face cam is us sitting in the chair, but it wasn't us. His face cam showed us both smiling, but I did not remember Dan smiling nor me. A deep male voice spoke out. 12 censored lane. I don't want to state the country. We were more paralyzed than ever, sitting and trembling in fear. I didn't have the power in me to do anything about it. It was like a nightmare, but sadly it wasn't. On Sam's face cam showed a shadow of a man behind us. I'd have to be about, say about six feet for sure, but I can't quite remember. As the man gradually came closer behind us, a weapon became visible, and he got closer as his weapon raised. As me and Dan sat smiling still, that smile was like something I've never seen before. The man swung the weapon in my neck, chopping it away. It was absolutely horrific. I felt like throwing up. The adrenaline made me spring up and snap the computer in half. I had so much adrenaline that it just broke in half like butter. My heart racing, I put my hand on my head in fear. Dan was pale and white, like a corpse. I proceeded to stomp on the computer until it was completely in bits. I started crying and do you blame me for that? Still to this day, I dread thinking about anything on the deep web, especially that incident. Just a reminder that this was three years ago, and me and Dan haven't spoken about six months or so because of COVID. 
but we rarely think about the incident anymore. I have no plausible explanation for what happened with the face cam, but I like to forget about it. One thing I've learned from this is never go on the dark web. You have no idea who's watching you.